We know the moon is shrinking by looking at the lobate scarps in detail. They actually reflect the crustal materials of the moon being pushed together, breaking, and being thrust over one another. So that indicates that something has been causing the moon to actually contract or shrink. And NASA cut its live feed, right as viewers claimed they saw the moon shrinking in real time. Now, before you click away thinking this is another conspiracy theory, hold on. This story isn't just internet gossip. It's connected to real NASA discoveries that most people have never heard about. See, while everyone was focused on Mars rovers and space stations, NASA quietly confirmed something incredible. The moon is shrinking, not in some distant future. It's happening right now, today, as you watch this video. But here's where it gets weird. Multiple viewers reported seeing the moon's size change during live NASA broadcasts. Then the feeds cut out. Coincidence, technical glitch, or something else entirely? The truth is more fascinating than any conspiracy theory, because what NASA found using Apollo seismic data and modern satellites reveals our moon isn't the dead, static rock we learned about in school. What if the moon isn't the static, lifeless rock we thought, but a world that's still cracking, shifting, and even glitching NASA's live streams? Stick around, because what you're about to discover will change how you look at that bright disk in the sky forever. And trust me, the real science behind this is way more mind-blowing than any fake conspiracy. Here's what NASA doesn't want you panicking about. In 2024, a groundbreaking study focused on the moon's south pole, the same exact region where NASA plans to land Artemis astronauts. Scientists used old Apollo seismometer data with cutting-edge mapping algorithms. What they found was shocking. The moon is still having earthquakes, not gentle tremors. We're talking magnitude 5 moonquakes, strong enough to topple equipment, crack habitats, and definitely mess with sensitive cameras. Visual map showing Artemis landing zones overlaid with moonquake epicenters. But here's the terrifying part. One of the strongest moonquakes ever recorded by Apollo happened right near the South Pole, the exact area where humans are supposed to build a permanent base. Think about it. We're planning to land humans at the very same South Pole where these quakes are still happening. If a camera caught the surface cracking, even slightly, would NASA want millions watching that live? Probably not. Now imagine this scenario. You're watching a live Artemis feed. The lunar surface looks peaceful. Then suddenly, the horizon shifts just a millimeter. The camera shakes. Equipment starts sliding. What would NASA do? keep broadcasting potential disaster, or hit the kill switch. Visual cross-section showing lunar crust with fault lines and stress fractures. The science gets even weirder. These aren't random quakes. They're happening because the moon's interior is still cooling and shrinking. Every year, the moon gets about 0.0, two millimeters smaller in diameter. That might sound tiny, but it's creating massive underground pressure. By the way, if you're fascinated by this, hit subscribe. We're diving into lunar mysteries you won't hear anywhere else. What really keeps NASA scientists awake at night? These fault lines are creating landslides and surface collapses that could happen without warning. If a live camera caught even a small surface collapse, it might look exactly like the moon was shrinking in that specific spot. But here's the real question. Could the moon actually appear to shrink right before our eyes? This is where the science gets absolutely mind-bending. Deep beneath the moon's surface, about 300 to 500 kilometers down, seismic models suggest there's still a partially molten layer. Think of it like a liquid core pocket that never fully solidified. Here's what's incredible. If this molten zone suddenly shifts or compresses, it could trigger rapid movements in the crust above, not over millions of years. We're talking minutes or hours. Picture this. A massive underground bubble of molten rock suddenly collapses the surface above it drops by just a few centimeters. To a high-definition camera filming that exact spot, the lunar horizon would appear to sink. The moon's edge would literally look like it was shrinking. NASA's own seismic data proves the moon's interior is way more active than anyone expected. These underground movements are creating surface cracks that are geologically brand new, some formed after the Apollo missions ended. This isn't some distant geological process. The moon is actively reshaping itself right now as you're watching this video. 
And if NASA's cameras happen to be pointing at the wrong place at the wrong time, electromagnetic twist. But wait, there's something even stranger happening on the moon that could explain everything. Apollo Instruments discovered something NASA rarely talks about. The moon has localized magnetic fields scattered across its surface. Not one big magnetic field like Earth. Dozens of smaller magnetic bubbles. Here's where it gets incredible. These magnetic anomalies line up almost perfectly with the thrust fault lines, the same cracks where the moon is actively shrinking and having moonquakes. Think about what happens when rock crushes under massive pressure. It generates electrical charges. Now imagine that happening on a scale of kilometers, with magnetic fields already present. Scientists now believe that when these fault lines slip during moonquakes, they could release electromagnetic bursts, powerful enough to scramble radio signals, disrupt cameras, and absolutely wreck live video feeds. We've all seen old NASA feeds suddenly drop to that please stand by screen. But what if it wasn't a person flipping a switch? What if it was the moon itself interfering with the transmission? This changes everything about those mysterious feed cuts. NASA officials always blame signal loss from satellites. But what if the real culprit was electromagnetic interference from lunar seismic activity? Picture this scenario. A live feed is broadcasting. Deep underground, a fault line slips. The magnetic field fluctuates. The camera feed glitches, making the moon's image distort or appear to shrink. Then the EM burst hits and the entire transmission dies. What do you think? Did NASA cut it or did the moon do it? Drop your thoughts in the comments before we reveal more. Apollo mystery tie in. This isn't the first time silence fell when the moon got strange. July 20th, 1969. Apollo 11 is descending toward the lunar surface. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin are about to make history. Then suddenly, two minutes of complete radio silence. For 120 seconds, Mission Control couldn't hear anything from the lunar module. No explanation was ever given in the official transcripts. Conspiracy theorists went wild. But what if the answer was right beneath their feet? We now know the Apollo 11 landing site sits directly on top of ancient thrust faults the same type of cracks that are still generating moonquakes today. Imagine hearing the ground shift beneath you while you're about to take humanity's first steps. What if Armstrong and Aldrin experienced a moonquake during descent? The electromagnetic interference could have knocked out their radio temporarily. They might have felt the lunar surface literally moving as they approached. NASA's seismic records from that mission show unusual vibrations around the landing time but these weren't analyzed properly until decades later. Here's the terrifying connection. The Artemis missions are targeting the lunar south pole. That's where the strongest modern moonquakes are happening. If Apollo experienced mysterious interference in a relatively quiet zone, what will Artemis face in the most seismically active region? This time, the world will be watching live. High definition cameras, crystal clear audio, millions of viewers, if the moon starts cracking and shifting during a live broadcast, NASA faces an impossible choice. Show the world that lunar exploration is more dangerous than anyone imagined, or cut the feed and deal with the conspiracy theories later. But the electromagnetic evidence gets even more compelling when you see what happened next. Gravitational resonance. Now here's where the science gets absolutely mind-bending. Some theoretical physicists are exploring a wild possibility. What if the moon shrinking isn't just changing the lunar surface? What if it's subtly altering the Earth-Moon gravitational balance? Think about it. The moon controls our tides through gravitational pull. Even tiny changes in the moon's mass distribution could theoretically create micro ripples in that gravitational field. This theory suggests these micro shifts might not stay confined to space. They could ripple into Earth's tides, our crust stress patterns, even atmospheric pressure, but here's the part that sounds like science fiction. If a major moonquake happened during lunar shrinkage, some researchers believe it could generate what's called a gravitational pulse. So if NASA cameras caught the moon's horizon pulsing, a real ripple in space-time, they'd likely cut the feed until they knew what it was. Sounds wild, right? But remember, gravitational detectors on Earth are already sensitive enough to pick up waves from black holes billions of light years away. If the moon gave off a pulse during a major quake, it might not just shake the moon. It could echo here on Earth, too. 
The LIGO detectors that won the Nobel Prize prove space-time can ripple. Now, imagine if the moon, sitting just 240,000 miles away, suddenly shifted its mass distribution during a collapse event. Those gravitational wave detectors might pick up the signal milliseconds before NASA's cameras even registered the surface change. That would give mission control just enough time to realize something unprecedented was happening. Cut the feed first, analyze the data later. Because if the public saw visual proof that our moon could generate gravitational waves, it would rewrite physics textbooks overnight. This theory connects every piece of the puzzle, the electromagnetic interference, the seismic activity, the feed cuts, and now gravitational physics. But what really happened to those viewers who claim they saw the moon shrinking? The answer lies in a perfect storm of coincidences that NASA never expected. Now, let's talk about what NASA has actually confirmed about lunar shrinkage, because the real science is both more boring and more terrifying than you might expect. Over the past 300 million years, the moon has shrunk about 150 feet in diameter. That's like a grape slowly shriveling into a raisin, but made of solid rock. This shrinkage creates features called lobate scarps. Think of them as small cliffs, usually just a few kilometers long and maybe 30 meters high. They're basically wrinkles in the moon's crust. Here's something incredible. Apollo 17 astronauts Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt actually drove their lunar rover right across one of these features in 1972. They had no idea they were crossing a cliff formed by the moon shrinking. The Lee Lincoln fault scarp in the Taurus Littrow Valley, they zigzagged right over it. Decades later, NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter photographed their tire tracks crossing this ancient scar. The shrinkage itself happens at a glacial pace, about 0.02 millimeters per year. That's roughly the thickness of a human hair every 50 years. But here's what matters for modern exploration. While the overall shrinkage is incredibly slow, the moonquakes it generates are happening right now, today, this very moment. Those Apollo seismometers recorded over 13,000 moonquakes between 1969 and 1977. Many traced back to these thrust faults. The moon isn't just shrinking, it's actively cracking under the pressure. NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter found that some of these fault scarps are so geologically young, they formed after the youngest lunar craters. We're talking about surface changes that happened relatively recently in cosmic terms. This means future Artemis astronauts won't just be walking on ancient stable ground. They'll be exploring a world that's still tectonically active. So how could viewers actually think they saw the moon shrinking on a live feed? The technical explanations are surprisingly straightforward. First possibility, perspective changes. When spacecraft move away from the moon, it appears to shrink naturally. Apollo 14 astronaut Alan Shepard described watching the moon get smaller through his window during their departure burn, but he knew why it was happening. Casual viewers of a live feed might not realize the camera platform was moving away at high speed. Second scenario, occultation. The moon regularly moves behind Earth's horizon from the International Space Station's perspective. As it disappears, the visible portion shrinks to a crescent, then nothing. To someone unfamiliar with orbital mechanics, this could look like the moon itself was shrinking rather than just moving out of view. Camera malfunctions create even weirder effects. A sudden zoom change could make the moon's image jump from large to tiny instantly. Focus problems might cause the bright lunar disk to appear to pulse or change size due to exposure adjustments. Video compression adds another layer of strangeness. Live feeds from space often suffer signal drops that create visual artifacts. Rows of pixels might freeze or update incorrectly, making images appear distorted or compressed. These can explain why some people thought they saw the moon shrinking. But here's the part that keeps scientists awake at night. What if multiple technical glitches happen simultaneously with actual seismic activity on the moon? The electromagnetic interference from a moon quake, combined with a camera malfunction, could create the perfect storm of visual confusion. That's when NASA Mission Control faces their worst nightmare. A live feed showing something that looks impossible, millions of viewers watching, and no way to immediately explain what's happening. But the most chilling possibility involves what NASA discovered about the timing of these incidents. Here's what we can't ignore. NASA cutting feeds isn't random. 
It usually happens right when something strange hits the screen. And with the moon still active, these coincidences feel harder to dismiss. Let's connect all the dots. The moon is shrinking and generating magnitude 5 moon quakes. These quakes happen near electromagnetic anomalies that can scramble transmissions. The seismic activity could theoretically create gravitational pulses detectable on Earth. Now, add live cameras broadcasting to millions of viewers. What happens when all these forces align during a major lunar event? The payoff isn't that NASA is hiding aliens or covering up conspiracies. The truth is more incredible. The moon isn't just shrinking slowly. It's a living world of cracks, quakes, and hidden electromagnetic forces. Every time we point a camera at the lunar surface, we're essentially watching a planet-sized earthquake machine that could act up without warning. The shrinkage creates pressure. The pressure causes quakes. The quakes generate interference. Think about the Artemis program. NASA plans multiple live broadcasts from the most seismically active region on the moon. They'll have high-definition cameras, sensitive equipment, and real-time communication with Earth. What happens when the next magnitude 5 moonquake hits during a live EVA? When the electromagnetic pulse scrambles the signal just as the surface cracks? When millions of viewers see the lunar horizon shift in real time? So, maybe the question isn't whether the moon is shrinking. We know it is. The real mystery is, will we catch it happening live before the feed goes out? NASA Mission Control will face split-second decisions. Keep broadcasting potential disaster or protect both the crew and public perception by cutting the feed until they understand what's happening. The viewers who claim they saw the moon shrinking might have witnessed the perfect storm, a technical glitch, electromagnetic interference, and actual seismic activity all happening simultaneously. But here's the most chilling possibility. What if they actually caught a real surface collapse event? A small landslide triggered by a moonquake captured at the exact moment the feed cut out. We started with a sensational claim about NASA cutting a live feed, but the real story runs much deeper. NASA didn't just cut a feed. The moon itself may be driving these mysterious technical failures. Every electromagnetic burst, every seismic tremor, every gravitational pulse creates the potential for another unexplained outage. This isn't a dead rock frozen in time. The moon is alive in its own way and it may yet surprise us on camera when we least expect it. The next time you see that familiar please stand by screen during a NASA broadcast, remember this investigation. It might not be human error or satellite problems. It could be the moon telling us it's still changing, still active, still capable of surprises. The Artemis missions will test this theory in real time. With cameras rolling and the world watching, we'll finally see if the moon's hidden forces can really disrupt our technology from 240,000 miles away. This story isn't over, it's just beginning. As we return to the lunar surface with better cameras and more sensitive instruments, we're guaranteed to capture phenomena that previous generations could never have imagined. The moon is shrinking, cracking, and electromagnetically active. The only question is what we'll see next, and whether the feed will stay live long enough to show us. If you want to be here when we dive into the next lunar mystery, hit subscribe and join us. The story of the moon is only just beginning.